Today, many members of Congress awoke listening to NPR for yet another story about Norfolk, Virginia, the area of the United States on the eastern seaboard where we've seen the most rapid increase in the sea level. Uh, this matters, being home to the largest naval base in the world, placing in question its long-term survivability. A uh, story in the Washington Post several weeks ago talked about the impact that this is having on the waterfront, including one church that is being forced to relocate. I love the pastor's comment that his parishioners should not have to consult a tide table to determine whether or not they can go to church. The news also included the Supreme Court's third affirmation of the power of the EPA to regulate greenhouse gases, setting hopefully at risk the long-term battle over whether or not we can deal with this critical area of carbon pollution. We also have seen a media blitz from a coalition of respected senior officials, Republicans, Democrats, and independents, stretching back to the Nixon administration, talking about the impact of climate change, particularly as it deals with business. We've had a report from four Republican EPA administrators talking about the need to support the EPA's effort with the new rule for carbon emissions. Today, on the steps of Capitol Hill, as I passed, there were representatives from the citizen climate lobby from all over the country who are fanning out across the Capitol, making their case. Mr. Speaker, the science is, in fact, clear. We have very severe problems associated with carbon pollution and the impacts that humans have had on climate. Uh, we're looking at uh, reports that ought to sober everybody around here, tripling the number of days of 95 degree plus weather. Thinking about the impacts that rising sea level is going to have on coastal states, Louisiana, for example, looking at up to 5% of their insurable land being underwater uh, by mid-century, perhaps 20% by the turn of the century. There's a trillion and a half dollars that's likely to be underwater of insurable properties. It's time for us to stop debating the science the science is, in fact, clear. It's time for us to look at opportunities. The EPA rule is going to go into effect. We all ought to be engaged with taking advantage of the flexibility that has been proposed by the administration to fine-tune it to the needs and opportunities in our state. It's important that we start work on the implementation of a revenue-neutral carbon tax. Virtually every expert, conservative, liberal, uh, economics, business, agree that having a revenue-neutral carbon tax to change the habits of American business and households, using the revenues to reduce the impact on lower-income citizens and on small business, is the quickest, fastest way to be able to make progress in terms of climate protection. We can, in fact, slow the impact uh, and, uh, in terms of its uh, accelerating impact, and we can prepare for what we cannot avoid. Experts in climate science, joined by hard-headed business people and citizen activists, all agree that it's time for Congress to get engaged for Congress to stop this act of denial and come together on simple common sense steps that we can make to strengthen our communities, to slow the increase of climate change and be able to prepare for stronger opportunities in our local economies as we move to take advantage of this. Everybody should take action so that all our families can be safer, healthier, and more economically secure.